After our lecture about the letter Aleph, mainly Aleph, Bet, as we mentioned, the first letters of the Aleph Bet, which means Aleph, learning, Ulpan, studying, then Bet, understanding, is the basis of everything. I mean, one should learn so uh, definitely everything about Judaism, about everything. Then try to understand in bet, letter bet represent also insight by Kakarochet. So this is the first stages that one should start studying, learning, trying to understand properly. So uh, these are the stages that the man work on himself. Yeah. Learning a lot. But the man should know that he has a purpose to help others also, physically and spiritually, which means giving charity, helping people, also spiritually, teaching people, telling about God, about Judaism, about the world, the creation of the world. So these are the letters which come after Aleph, but Gimal Dalet, Gimal, means in Hebrew, giving, love. Gomel Hasadim Tzavim. And Dalit is a poor Dal, the poor a man to whom should help. Poor physically and spiritually. So Gimal Dalit telling us that after studying, learning, important, then you should look to help others. This is the purpose of creation. It's written that the pillar of creation is Chesed. Olam chesed ibane, God created the word for chesed, chesed is love mechanic, helping people. So those letters, Gimal Dalet, are very important one. In fact, this is a book of mine, this is Letters of Fire, came in many editions, and Baruch Hashem was accepted by many people. And there I discuss about Hebrew letters, a lot of people letters, all letters, Gimatria and everything. Now this book came, the first edition, by Feldheim, and a very good editor, Mrs. Tabak, she passed away, but very, very good book. <laughs> I mean, edited nicely, translated, but by Oshri, books, Oshri, translated books for art scores. English is nice English. So there you can, we'll see a lot about Hebrew letters, very, very important book to know about Hebrew letters, Salabet, because this is a letter with which God created the world. We said this was in the Torah, Bereshit bara Elohim et Hashamayim et Az, and being God created et, ayat a letter from Aleph till Taf. He is an extra word, really, because the Torah should say, Bereshit bara Elohim, Shamaim Vahas, in the beginning, God created and then never else. Why is et? So Kabbalah says that et are the 22 letters. The first one is Aleph, the last one is Taf. And this was the basis of creation. So definitely, Hebrew letters are the basis of creation. So it's important to learn about them. So let us. Today, speak about two letters, Gimal Dalet. What they are, what they represent, how they look like. So let us start with the shape of those letters. So let us see now. So the letter Gimal have the line there, and, the she, and she is also down yeah, as you can see, it is down. Let us see, exactly it comes in such a way, yeah, that you can see. Yeah, Gimal, yeah, come. This is the letter Gimal, which basically is, be, is built up from the letter Vav. This is the letter Vav. And the upside, Yud, the scroll, Sefer Torah, you can clearly see that this is the shape of Yud, the letter Yud. And this is the letter Vav. Now, if you remember, the letter Aleph, our discussion was, we show that almost every letter in the Aleph, but is built up of few letters, like Aleph, 
you're down top, you're down, vav in the middle. There is a reason for it, but it represents the upper water, the lower water, and spheres, yeah. Bet also represents the letter Dalet, just now we see it on the letter Vav. So Gimal has this shape, and we'll discuss just now what it means, what our Rabbi tells us about the letter. Perhaps now we'll tell you, once we see it, that this letter is very similar, meaning like a hand, and in the end you have something small, yeah? So our Rabbi tells us this represents the hand of the person, and this is the coin, whatever he gives to the poor, and the poor, we see just now, is the letter Dalet. Dal also means in Hebrew, in Hebrew poor, and Dalet. Dalet, <laughs> Dalet can mean also poverty, Dalet, Dalut. So, the letter Gimel represents a man who really gives. So this is the shape, he put his hand towards the poor and put inside the Yud. Now Yud really can be a coin, but Yud, the letter Yud represents wisdom. The name of God, Yud Kebab, okay? The Yud is wisdom, is understanding. So this is also giving wisdom to people, yeah? To understand, to know about the Torah, about the world. So Gimal, meaning Gomel giving, is exactly the shape of the hand which gives. And by the way, it is interesting, like also in English, also you have a lot of words, giving, granting. <laughs> also start with Gimal, yeah, granting, giving. Gadol in Hebrew, greatness. But our Rebbe said that greatness is not in a height or money. Greatness is in wisdom, Gadol. This is why Abraham is called in the Medrash, Adam Gadol. <laughs> Great man, not he was really very high or but because he gave learning to one, knowledge to the world, we know the story, yeah, and the angels came to eat, he told them, please, please God, he gave you the food, and so on, we know. So Abraham was called, he's called really in the Medrash, Adam Gadol. Even the word Gadol, if you take the root of the word Gadol, you have Gimal, Dalet, giving the, and Lamed, Lamed is learning, so hard, yeah. So the man Gadal, this is greatness. Greatness is in helping people physically and spiritually. Yeah. Gadol, yeah. Granting, giving. This is really the greatness of men. <laughs> see all those English words start with the same letter. You can see my book, Hebrew Source of Languages. You can get it in Kindle, you can get it on Amazon.com, you can in my site bladersonbooks.com. So I shock really that basically English come from Hebrew and many other languages which was accepted by some universities. Yeah, there is Moses and Isaac Moses and what's very important about this academic work. So this is a gimel we are going to speak about, the letter which represents giving. And then we, the letter afterwards is Dalet. So let us see what is the Dalet. The Dalet looks something like this, yeah? Here, you can see the Dalet, yeah? Dalet, yeah, is a line on top, a line on the bottom. This is, no, not the bottom, line on top, you can see this one. And then the line which comes out, which is really basically the letter Vav, yeah? So here you have the Dalet, Two lines really, down one and up one. Amazingly, explanation of it is brought in books that the line on top, yeah, this one, yeah, the line on top, represents the two elements. There are four elements, as you know, right? You know, the elements are earth, water, wind, and fire, right? These are the four elements, the basis of everything. So, so it's written in books, there's a letter Dalet, which represents poverty, it means something, no meaning, dull, poor people, spiritually or physically, represents those two elements, the two elements on top, this one, are the fire 
and the wind which are really flying around in the air. And this one, wow, which is going down, this is earth and water which are going down. So basically the letter Dalet represent poverty, represent the four elements, no, very important elements, but by themselves they're not worth anything, even in science. If you want them to work properly, they have to add, like in science, electromagnetic and all other things, yeah. And this really basically is the letter A, about which we will speak in another lecture, but you can see the letter A have the Dalet and Yud, which also upside Yud, inside, like the Gimel have upside Yud, and the A was the letter with which the work was created. It's written by Abraham, simple in their creation, but our Rebbe said us, by Abraham, God created the world with the letter A, four elements, <laughs> electromagnetic, what you call it. So, the letter A, which represent exactly these four elements, but there is a yod, something which moves them, yeah? This can be electromagnetic and all the other elements in science. And, just depending spiritually, the letter H represents the five books of Moses, that we're learning, studying the basis of Torah. So, these are the two letters we are going to speak about, the letter Gimel, as we said, and the letter Dalet, both of them have the lines, and the Yud, upside down, wisdom, <laughs> Yud, and physical things, materialistic, you are able to combine this together, because this is the root and the basis of creation. So let us go now, in those letters, so much about it in my book, which is Sophia, I represent very much. It was done beautifully because the translators of, of uh, Art Roll, you know, translate a lot of books, Oshri, books Oshri, and the editing by one of the best editors of Feldham, Tabak, passed away. So, it was done, really, <laughs> a lot of work was invested in this book, and a lot of wisdom of the Hebrew letters. So, let us start now explaining Gimal, Dalet. So we saw that Gimal represent giving, granting, <laughs> greatness. Dalet, poverty, poor, yeah. Basically, what are those letters, what we call giver, in, in somebody who influence giving, and recipient, three and four. Three represents the giving, this one who gives, and the four represents the recipient, the poor man, physically or spiritually. It is interesting that we have three forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and we have four mothers, for her mothers, you know, Sarah, Rachel, so, for three and four, the fathers normally gives, and the mothers normally takes. That means that also the idea, not some special, simple meaning giving it, but three and four represent giving a recipient, right? Three and four. The father, in fact, it is interesting. The gematri of father, Aleph Bet, is three. Because yeah. normally the father gives. So, basically, three and four, Gimal Dalet, yeah, Gimal Gimatri, or Gimal three and Dalet four, represent giving and taking or receiving. It is interesting that in music, the same thing. If somebody knows music, no, I happen to know music playing. Environment. So, composing. So, the, the build up of the Do and Mi, I don't know, ABC, what you have there. But, is three and four. You have the Do and Mi, these are the givers. Fa, Sol, La, Si, the four, which are accepting. All together make seven. Yeah, seven. Seven days of the week. Seven is number of completion. Yeah, seven. 
It's very inter interesting what Rav Shimshon Rafael Ir said. There's uh, two verses, really, more, but the same letters. We have Sheva. Sheva is seven. Yeah. In fact, almost like in English, seven and seven. Yeah. You know, the Litvish people who don't know to, cannot say Shin, they say Sen. They even say Seva, like seven. So Sheva, number seven, represents number. But in Hebrew, those who are benching after eating, they say Bachata Vesavata Virachta. Eat <laughs> after being satisfied. Bless God, thank him for your food. So the Hebrew word Sabata, the root of it, is Savea, like Sheva, Savea, satisfied. What has to do satisfaction with the number seven? But it is not because number seven represents completion, color seven, color seven, other things. So when a man have all these seven, he's satisfied. So Sheva and Savea goes together. Yeah. Well, this is represent completion, the number seven. So, Gimal and Dalet, three and four, and you have really harmony between givers and taking, right? Each one not to respect the others. Uh, then it's definitely happiness, satisfaction, perfection, everything in this number. So let us go more into this letter, Gimal Dalet. Now, if you remember, we spoke about punctuation also, importance. So if you take the Gimal and Dalet, and you put dots under the letter Gimal, three dots, you know the three dots is U, yeah? Or if you put a dot on top of the Gimal, then you have O. So let us start, what will be if you put the letter Gimal Dalet, yeah? You top a dot on top. So I will read it in Hebrew, God, God. <laughs> the God, this is a famous God, yeah? And the God is really the Hebrew letters, Gimal Dalet. Yeah, if you put the dot on top, the dot on top represent also Kabbalistic is a sphere of harmony. Okay, you heard. But it's amazing. You can see another clear proof that English comes from Hebrew, yeah? So, Gimal Dalet, you have the top cholam, which you call in Hebrew, you have God. Yeah, God? No, fine. Now, if you put three dots under the Gimal, three dots is Kubus, is U. So, what you will have the word good. <laughs> so, God and good in Hebrew. Yeah, good and God. The connection is simple because God is good. Yeah, God is good. The question what we are, but if you know to use what God give us will be very good, but if you don't know how to use it, it's not so good. Amazing. So the letters Gimal Dalet in Hebrew giving and receiving, yeah, which represents the giver and the recipient. And this is what one should do, right? After learning, studying, don't look up to only for yourself, look what is going on. In the world, try to help. Physically, spiritually, Gimal Dalet. If you do it, then the hay will come. Then the world really will <laughs> go properly. This is about the hay is another action. Now we speak about the Gimal Dalet. So amazing, the little Gimal Dalet with punctuation, with the kubits is good, and with the cholam is good. No, it can be coincidence. No, the English took it from Hebrew. Hebrew is a source of all languages, as we see. And some universities in the settlement, they <laughs> agree with this. And they say clearly what we thought was wrong. They said, if you know, to tell is that evil come from Indo European and Indo, all kind of this, and Finnish, no more. <laughs> and here is an example, you know. Once I, I gave a lecture to you know, English people, you know, speaking English, and Americans, and all that. I told them about the Hebrew language. So, so I said to them, you know, let us uh, ask you a question. God, how you write God in English? G-O-D? Okay, very nice, no? But what will be if you read it 
options from the other side, from the left to right, not from the right to left, to the English right to left. What will be dog? Frightening. How can you compare God with a dog? And, and what is the same letter? What is going on? So the people don't really don't know. So I told them, you don't know because you don't, you don't know Hebrew. <laughs> Why? Why? No, here? Just now what I told you. The letter, Gimel Dalet, represents goodness, greatness, as we said, giving to the poor. What is dark in Hebrew? If you read in Hebrew, the word God, Gimel Dalet, yeah, God, from the left to right, then it will be dark fish. Fish or dog, you know, dog also, right? We see what they connect between fish and a dog, yeah. But in Hebrew, dog is fish. On Shabbos, it's a mitzvah to eat fish. One of the explanations is because the fish always open his mouth for more water and more water. Water is Torah, because Shabbos is a day that you should learn as much as you can Torah. This is a day which was given for studying Torah. This is what is written, yeah. Amazing. So, comes out. The, the dog, the fish, the Aled Gimal, is the opposite of Gimal Dalel. Why? Simple. Because Gimal Dalel is when the giver goes to look for the poor people, Dalel, to help them. This is a good person, Gimal Dalel. But somebody, also a poor person, have to look for giver. So the dog, then he will go to look for people, for givers. This is a situation of Dalet Gimal. Dalet is when the poor looks for givers. <laughs> the dog <laughs> looks for givers. No, now you understand why God and dog are the same letters. Because the God is good, he gives. But the dog is taking, he barks. The Bible there is a verse which says the, God, dog, the dog's bark, have, have. Now in different places. But normally I think the, the Bugs have, have, have means give, give. You see, have, give, give. No, English give, have, yeah. The dogs is written, they are always hungry. All the time they're looking for food, never satisfied. So, this is exactly the situation of Dalit Gimel. This is why the dog is called dog. And very likely, this is why the dog is called dog, yeah, also. So, now you understand that to understand English, you have to understand Hebrew. Now, this is what is my book, Hebrew Source of Languages, and this is one can get in Amazon.com, can get in my site, gladiosandbooks.com, one can get it, Kindles, yeah, maybe also in shops, <laughs> but very important. So, this is Gimal Dalet, yeah, as we saw, the shape represents exactly this giving and Dalet, unbelievable how rich is the Hebrew language. The very, <laughs> the, Language, the holy tongue with which they were created. This is so important. As you remember, I brought you the prophet Sephania, chapter 3, verse 8, 8 7, 8, 9. All of these three verses are very important because they speak about the war of Gog and Magog. There is a verse there which Describe Gog and Magog, have 26 verse and 27 letters of the alphabet, of the alphabet there. Because to tell us, <laughs> the, the whole world depends on the alphabet. And then the verse afterwards says that in future, the whole world will speak Hebrew. Safa Bura, clear language. Hebrew is called clear language. It's only in Hebrew, every word shows what it is. As you see just now, yeah, when you speak about God, about God, about Doug, you can see clear exactly what, is the, what it means. This is a <coughs> wealth about the Hebrew language, so much behind every letter. In fact, as I wrote a book on the number six, number six, yeah, what is behind number six? If you see the six in Hebrew, you have, you have in Hebrew the six, you have, as you can see here, the number six, yeah, <coughs> number six. <laughs> right? Every size in the Torah it appears. You have three branches. Shin. Now if you have two shin, you have number six, shesh. Yeah, shesh. Why six branches? Because you get the same spheres. Because you have 
חוכמה בינה דעת וואן סעד או חסד גבוה תפארת נצח עוד יסוד טו סיקס אז יש שש אין עברו רייט רפרזנט סיקס ואי זה ווי מוסט אוף זה לנגוויצ'ס זה הנאמבר סיקס זה ווי סימילר טו עברו לייק סיס סיס אין סיס אין פרנש אין שש אין ראשן ואני אעשה ווייס פור שורט טיים In Holland, I spoke Netherlands, Holland, so then I have to say this, this, and this is also, in Afrikaans, in South Africa, in the world there also, this, Afrikaans, I come from Holland, so this and this are the same thing, and many other, even the English word, six, this and the American, all the English, everything really, if you look in the number six, like Hebrew, but only in Hebrew, the letter, The letter number six represents what it is, so in fact, you can see in Kindle, <laughs> my book, The Secret of Number Six. This is shows what the Hebrew language is, yeah. So, <clears throat> Gimal Dalet, as we say, together seven, three and four, which represent givers and taking recipients, unbelievable. And Dag, the opposite. fish and uh, dog. You see, all this to understand, all these ideas, you have to learn Hebrew, no? but in the future, the whole world, this is what is written, Sefania. You know, by the way, the, the Hebrew word Sefania, if you take it into two words, it's like Sof and Yud K, the code of God, Yud K, Chokmah, Bina, Yaakov, and also, code goes together, the code teach you a lot about letters and words, yeah, that's why seeing what is My side to the Bisha Didi is Professor Aralik. <laughs> Very important, you have to see the codes, so the codes in the Torah, which is the letters were the <laughs> blueprint of creation. So the Torah was the blue creation. God looks into the Torah and created the world. Yeah, in fact, Bill Nagaon says what was, what it is, and what will be <laughs> in the Torah. I mean, when God created the world, This is what is written, he looked in the Torah and created the word accordingly, which means, simple example, yeah, my, my son is a pilot, so this is what he tells me, I don't have to work so hard, so why not, because today, before you fly, you put in the computer exactly the way, yeah, you put exactly the way from here to New York and from New York to Israel, right? And then, no problem, the plane goes nicely, but when there are winds, you know, <laughs> holes, which is a cold, yeah, then you have to go down and up, right and left. This is exactly when people keep the Torah. This is what God created, this is the idea. He created the, with the five books of Moses, the whole program of this world. I will go, yeah, exactly, yeah, this is what the Torah is like the computer. The, the, <laughs> Program in the computer, if you fulfill the Torah properly, the Shabbos, everything fine, life are going nicely, no problem, everything fine, harmony, peace, between people, between men and wife, <laughs> everything fine. But then, unfortunately, people don't go according to the Torah, then, oh, then the Torah says, no, if you don't keep my Torah, who? 98% Curses, holocaust, pogroms, terror, all these things, right? No. Then you have to do tshuva, <laughs> to return, to go out. But whatever it is, in fact, this is the Torah. This is what Bible quotes are. What are Bible quotes? They work only in the five books of Moses, not in the Bible. Yeah? Only in the Old Testament, which they call it. <laughs> so, why? Because the five books are basis of creation, so nothing to do. So therefore, what you see really Now, for example, when I found what many televisions showed in the state, that when I found this thing, yeah, then, <laughs> very interesting, it, 